Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Stitching is Elementary. My name is Kara Lee and this is Quilty Tube number three. Um, today is, what is today? Oh, Thursday, September 29th. Um, so sorry it's been so long uh, since my last update video. And in my last update video I had said I was gonna do a Quilty video because I had a bunch to show. Um, and I actually did try to do it like a week and a half ago. So I've been wanting to edit my own videos. My husband edits them on a program he has, which it's just too complicated for me to, I don't want to take the time to figure it out. I've tried quickly and it's too complicated. I've tried many different programs. And so um, I heard iMovie was supposed to be really easy, but we are not Apple, Apple household for the most part. Um, my oldest daughter has lots of Apple products. My youngest has an iPad and she does have an um, Apple laptop. But... My husband, who is tech support, helps me with everything, and he hates Apple, knows nothing about it. He has worked with it, and he thinks they're just a pain. And so anyway, but I really want to do it. So I thought, well, let me try my daughter, my youngest daughter, Ellie's iPad. So I set it up. I filmed on it. I loved filming on it. Um, I was able to edit it in iMovie. It was great. And then it was stuck on her iPad because she didn't have enough storage for me to save it and then upload it to anything. So I figured, well, there, there's got to be a way. Um, I deleted everything. No. Um, I kept researching online, couldn't figure it out. Finally, I made an appointment at the Apple store and took it in. And they were like, it just doesn't have enough memory. It was, it's a 32 gigabyte. It's just not enough to do this. And I thought, that's ridiculous. First of all, there should be a way, no matter what. If you can do it on the, on the device, you should be able to get it off the device. But whatever. So, um, so I thought, well, I'm done with that. I deleted the video and gave her back her iPad. Um, and then my husband did find, I think it was an Apple Pro um, used on eBay, but it had like 265 gigabytes, I think, or whatever. So I should be able to do it on that. So he bought that for me and it's on its way. So hopefully it works because I would love to be able to edit my own videos. But for today's video, we are back to my phone um, and he will have to edit it. So that's why this has been so long. But um, I am on vacation this week uh, for my fall break. So I wanted to get this done um, so that I could get back on track. And then I have, I'm ready to do another cross stitch update video. And I was trying to do them, you know, like a week apart. Anyhow. So I hope you are all well. Um, welcome back to all my current subscribers. Um, if you are a new subscriber here, welcome. Thank you for stopping by to check me out and check out all my crafty stuff. This is mostly about cross stitch and um, quilting. And sometimes I do them together and sometimes I do them separate. It just depends on how much I have of quilting to show. If it's just a little bit, I'll just show it at the end of my floss tube video. But if it's a lot where you know the video is gonna be over an hour, I'll do a separate one. Um, I've also been getting back into paper crafting, so every now and then I might show a little bit of that. So let's get to my quilts. So let me get my little notebook. Um, so I have a bunch of finished quilts. Um, I have a bunch of whips and I have a bunch of haul and plans. So you can see my whips up here, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So finished quilts, I have four, three finished quilts to show that I've gone back from the quilt to recently. The first one is called um, Fireworks Fizz Quilt, and it's from, oh, now am I going to remember. My last video, I had my, hold on one second, I think I have my um, quilt book. Yeah, I threw it over here. So I use one of these. I use this for cross stitch too, but Fat Quarter Shop has a quilting journal, so I've been using this for my quilts too. So let me see. All right. Yeah, it's by A Bit of Scrap Stuff. She has an Instagram account and a blog. Um, her name's Melanie Call, and the name of the quilt is Firework Fizz. And I did it all in Lori Holt's um, B plaid fabric, and it is not bound yet because that's what I hate doing, so I haven't gotten to that yet. So here, let me see if I stand up. You can probably see it, but uh, here it is. I'll just kind of roll and turn. So it's kind of like big blocks of color. I'll see if I can take a picture and have my husband insert a picture of the whole thing. But yeah, that's what it looks like basically. And the back is um, this B plaid fabric and you can see the cute star swirl my quilter did. I really like it. And it's about, I think, 56 by 56. Maybe 60 by 60. Okay, the next one 
I started last year and uh, just finished this year. This was a kit from, of course, I don't have all the patterns out here. Let me see if I can grab it again. I thought I had gotten everything back, but apparently I didn't. Oh, sorry. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is a pattern by the Pattern Basket. And it is sunflower seeds. But you see, she didn't like orange and black, so I think she used fig tree fabrics. Um, but I wanted to look more like sunflowers. And um, Heart, I can never remember the name of the shop. They're on Instagram and they're on Etsy. Handmade and heart made, I think is what it is, had a kit for it um, <clears throat> in these other colors. So it's more in sunflower colors. A little closer so you can see the border. There we go. Yeah, see on the iPad, it just, I don't know, you could see it better, but I like the iPad. I hope this next one works. So there is part of it. Also not bound yet. Let's see. So it is one, two, three, four sunflowers by four sunflowers. So it's square. It's just kind of controlled, scrappy. All different browns she sent in the kit. Yeah. And the back is this giant yellow plaid. And I think this is from Cory Yoder's fall collection from last year cozy something maybe I don't remember but yeah I really love that oh and the quilting she did on this let me see if I can show it this was a sunflower quilting design if you can see that right there oh, there um that I found on Pinterest when I went and I just typed in long arm sunflower quilting designs and this came up and she didn't have this my quilter so I said you know I'll buy it for you if you'll do it <laughs> And she was like, no, I'll buy it. And she loved it. She's like, that design is so pretty. So yeah, I really like that. Okay, and the next one, and see, when I originally did this video, I had all my books pulled out. But this is just a Lori Holt block from Lori, from Farm Girl Vintage 2, the Patchwork Pumpkin block. And I just made a bunch of them and put them together. Um, just put them together. <laughs> with the sashing. There it is. So these are one, two, three, four, five. Five across, five by five down. And for the border, I just did a kind of scrappy. I had this, I had this, the background is this, or the sashing is this white with a little orange dot. Here, let me fold this up and I can show you. Uh, but I ran out of it. So I went to my quilt shop and I was like, let me find something that matches, that looks good with it or something. So I found this acorn, or not acorn, candy corn print. Yeah, here. So it's this candy corn and it's got the little orange dots too. So it matched like perfectly with it. So it's just a little border like that. And then the back is this orange star fabric. And there you can see the quilting is like an oak leaf design. Beautiful. I love this star print. I have it in like a bunch of different colors. It's really pretty. Yeah. So that is my patchwork pumpkin quilt. If anybody wants a bind for me, let me know. <laughs> I'm so bad about binding. I don't mind sitting and doing it, but now that I cross stitch, um, I don't really want to sit and hand bind. I want to sit and cross stitch. So I've done machine binding, which I love how quick it is, and it does not look bad, but I just don't like the look on the back as well as I do the hand. So then I just never get to doing it. So let me make myself do it. And I display a lot of these on a quilt um, ladder I have out in the hallway. And so I can just fold them in and you can't see that they're not bound. The only problem is if my kids go to use it. Anyway, okay. So those are all my finished quilts. Now I do want to do sometime soon, um, like maybe a whole Halloween quilting video or fall, because I have a ton of Halloween and fall quilts. Um, but I figured it was going to take too long to show all those as well. So maybe another week or so, I'll show those at the beginning of October. Okay, so now whips. So this strawberry swoon I've been working on since last year, and I'm finally just about done. Um, I decided to use 
this big tree stitched fabric for the sashing. So that is what's right here. I don't know if you can see it. Let me pull this piece off. So that's the sashing. Um, now the pattern, okay, so it's Thimble Blossoms Swoon 16. So it's four by four. Um, and you can see that it's just sashing between and sashing going across. I was thinking of putting in green cornerstones, maybe. So I have that up there with it. Put it here. There you go, like a green. But this I feel like is too light. I'm thinking maybe just a solid green, which is what this is. You can see that, or this darker green might look good for the sashing corner post. I just think a little pop of green would be nice in there. So I have one row sewn together and I need to get to the rest of it. This was a really fun block to make. I would love to make holiday ones, but see how long this one has taken me. So who knows when that will happen, if it will happen. <laughs> anyway, so I'll have to just finish the sashing. Um, and then put the border on and I'm done. And for the border, um, what's there? Oh no, the border is just the sashing, but for the backing, I got this from Fig Tree Stitched. Kind of the same colors. It goes really nice with the sashing. So that, that'll that definitely be finished by next summer. Um, and then, so for National Sew a Jelly Roll Day, I really want to do it. I never have time normally to do those, but I decided I was going to do it because I have wanted to do this quilt for quite a while. Um, Jelly Roll Jambor Jamboree by Erica Arndt. And it's a really easy quilt. You just use one Jelly Roll. And here it is. One Jelly Roll and some background for sashing. So this is a jelly roll I've had in my stash a long time, an old fig tree line called Honey Sweet, which is like one of my favorites. So it was really hard to break this one open, but I thought it had nice fallish colors to it. Not Halloween for once, but fall. Um, so it, it's, I think it's like 50 by 50 maybe, I don't know, 56 by 56, I can't remember. Um, but then there's an, a border on it. But here's what I found though. So this looks really simple, right? You just put sashing strips between each block and then you sew um, a sashing strip between each row. But here's the problem I have is making sure that this row and this row line up because there's no seams to match to pin it together. You're basically pinning you know, um, if I sew my sashing strip to this row, then I'm basically pinning this row to it and trying to eyeball it and get it to match up. Well, it wasn't matching up perfectly and it was driving me nuts. I'm like, there's gotta be a way. So what I did is I took my ruler. So if I sewed this sashing strip to this row, I take my ruler and I just draw a line from this sashing down here and the sashing down here. So I have those lines and then when I laid this piece on top of it, I could match up the lines with this, these seams and then it matched much better. So just in case you're like me and after 20 years of quilting, you still didn't figure that out. <laughs> there you go. Now you don't have to figure it out on your own. But yeah, it came out, it came together really nicely. And then I was like, well, what am I going to do for a border? Because it's supposed to have a border out here. As you can see in herds. She actually does two borders, but I didn't feel a need for that. Um, Cause this is an old, um, an old fabric line. So I thought, well, maybe something current from Fig Tree would go. And I looked around at what I had and I thought, well, I don't love anything. I'll, you know, go to the quilt shop and see what they have. But I thought, let me just check Etsy and just see if there's any honey sweet on there. And I did find um, yardage of this gorgeous red print. So I got two yards of it and now that will be my border. So I think that's going to look good, which I know you can't really see, but that'll be my border. So I'll show you that and take a picture of it when it's all done and post it on Instagram. I'm pretty active on Instagram. So I am stitching is elementary um, on Instagram. So check that out because I usually put bigger pictures of my quilts and just I post for stitching cross stitch every day. So usually, although I think I forgot this morning, 
So we can do that. Okay, so that's one whip um, or two whips. And then this is a whip that I, in my last video, showed the whole thing, but it is so big and heavy, I wasn't bringing it down. I had shown this in one of my last videos, another video when I just did um, a little quilting update at the end. Um, this is a patriotic strippy quilt, and it's a quilt as you go. So you sew the strip diagonally to the batting squares, and then, so like you start with this, this strip, and then you sew the side ones on, and so on. Um, it's from a book by Jira Vandenberg. I think I'm saying her last name wrong, which I also had out last time, but I've shown it before. And it's just a Quilt As You Go book. I think it's called Quilt As You Go Made Modern. Yeah, I know it is. And this quilt is in there. So it's really fun because it's free. You just pick two and a half inch strips and sew them on however you like. So you can see they're all different. So these were my extra strips, but I made a king size quilt out of this. Um, but it's huge and heavy and I just didn't want to bring it down. I have it all folded and put away. Um, but basically you sew those together and you can see you press the seams open and then you would just lay your quilt on your backing and you pin at all the intersections and then you just sew a grid to attach this to your backing. Um, so I have the backing fabric and everything for it, but it's so big and heavy and I don't have any giant like king size floor space to lay it all out. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to baste it together. I was thinking about trying my dining room table um, and just putting half on at a time. So we'll see if that works. It's just really heavy. I'm afraid it's going to like fall off the table, but I don't know. But just imagine that in a king size. <laughs> and someday when it's all done, I'll post a picture. I'm not worried about it till next summer. So it probably won't get done till then. Okay. And then um, I had talked about this before. I wanted to do the um, summer moon quilt block of the month, but Moda came out with his midnight moon quilt along. And so I decided I wanted to do that. And I was going to do it in um, laundry basket quilts. Um, hold on. Oh, it's not named out here? Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Oh my, I wrote it down. I'm hungry, it's almost lunchtime. And I didn't put it in here. I can't remember the name of her line, but anyways, a new fall line. It's a cool name too. I'm mad I can't remember it. But anyway, here's what it looks like. Um, really pretty fabric. This is the half yard bundle I have. So I started it and um, I kind of got stalled again. So I only have this much done. So basically what this is in this book is you make three different sizes of each block. So I did three blocks, I think, in three different sizes. So let me show you those. I keep hoping I'll remember the name of that. So Here's these three, so there's the biggest, medium, and small. And what I did is I just pulled a bunch of different creams um, to use for the background. And then this line and some other more Halloween-y lines, which is where I got the cat from, that had the same tone and kind of went with it. Here's the big one medium and the teeny tiny one <laughs> so cute um but then when i put them together i didn't really love them well after recording my last video i figured out why there's another one big medium small so in my last video i put them all up on the board big medium, small, and I was talking about it, sorry, medium and small. And as I was saying to you that I wasn't sure if I liked the backgrounds all being different and I thought that maybe I wanted it to be all the same background, I realized that these three I all like together because their backgrounds look similar. I'll just show all four of the small ones. Yeah, let me grab a board here. 
There we go. So you can tell me what you think, but I think it's just because this one cream is a little too bright. I think those two look good. And then I think this one looks good. So those creams are all very similar. They're different, but they're the same tone. And then this cream one is the one that throws me off. See how it's just brighter? I mean, once they get the whole quilt done, it wouldn't matter. But I think the rest of the blocks, I'm going to make in these tones so that they really blend together. This one just, I feel like it's too different. So anyway, someday I'll get back to working on those. But it is fun. I like making the three different size blocks. So that's Summer Moon. They had done a quilt along with the fabrics on the book um, a long time ago through Fat Quarter Shop. Um, and then that Moda just came out with that idea this spring. I think Moda's Stitch Along started in April. So if you watch Pat Sloan, she has like done them all. And she did them every week with Moda. Okay, so those are all my whips that I have going. I mean, I have 10 more whips, but those are all the ones I'm working on. Um, so now we'll go into haul and plans. All right, so I went to my quilt shop the other day and was just looking around. I think I just, I don't know, I went for something little. But then I saw this fabric and I got this panel. You know how I love Halloween. Well, my kitchen and dining room are all blue and white. Um, and so I kind of wanted a table runner for my table in my kitchen that was Halloween, but blues and whites, which is not easy to find. So when I saw this, I thought, ooh, that's really cool. But I thought, well, how am I gonna make it into a table runner? So I got some other fabrics that went with it to kind of use in whatever design I decided on. Look at those, look at those cool spider webs. Um, this is these two, Go with this fabric line, Spirit of Halloween by Free Spirit. So these two are part of that collection, part of this collection. This one's cool. It's got little jack-o'-lanterns on it. But then this spider web, which I love, I don't know who it's by. Let's see, Riley Blake. Yeah, it's Riley Blake. But they're like metallic spider webs, so they're sparkly. And I don't know what collection, it doesn't say. I wanna say that Bad to the Bone, which I think is them, but I'm not totally sure even. Oh no, it's a My Mind's Eye. So one of my My Mind's Eye Halloween fabrics um, collections it goes with. So I got that one. And then this is just a charcoal fig tree uh, text, which I thought was cute. So then I remembered, I had gotten a baby panel, one of the, um, a baby girl panel. They had out a long time ago, it was all cute little images of girls doing things and pinks and blues and yellows. Um, and I had made a quilt for my one friend out of that using the panel. So let me show you. So this book is um, by Vanessa Gertzen Charm School Quilts. And so I made this quilt for my friend. Let me show you the whole. And instead of doing that patchwork blocks in the center, so instead of doing uh, these, I used the panel. And then I just did the sashing with the stars. So I was thinking like one row of that would be cute as a, uh, as a table runner. Cause I like my table runners to be kind of big. I might even do two rows. I like them to cover just about the whole table and just leave a little frame around the table. So I'm hoping that I can do two rows, but one is fine. And I'll just use that setting, the stars. I think that'd be pretty. I think I'll use the spider web to make the stars. And then, I don't know, some darker fabric for the sashing. So that's one plan. And then, this is kind of a whip and a plan because I did start it by starting the fabric. So I, I always join the fig tree um, block of the months, um, mystery quilt block of the months. Um, I have like four different ones going. The last one that I had joined was a strawberry one. I forget the name of that one. And I do have most of it done. I just need to finish a few blocks. The other ones, I don't think I've even started. Um, so I kind of lately always try to avoid these. <laughs> When I see they're coming, I'm like, no, don't look because you have so many. 
Um, so this one I had seen pop up on Instagram. I'm like, no, 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 scroll by really fast. I'm like, oh, look at it. And then um, an Instagram friend messaged me and she's like, hey, did you see this um, fig tree Christmas um, block, of the, block of the month with their new fig tree Christmas stitch fabric line and all that? And I was like, oh yeah. And she's like, are you doing it? I'm like, yeah. And so I went back and I ordered it really quick. Um, that's all I needed was a little encouragement to break my rule. So I was really going to try hard not to do it. But anyway, I'm glad she asked me though, because um, it is beautiful. So you get a, like a whole packet of information from them, like on, on the whole block of the month. And then the first, um, real quick, the first um, blocks, first month's blocks, cutting directions are in there. So I have month one and month two, and I'm like, I gotta keep up. <laughs> So I have them all starched and I'll just show you the fabrics from each month. And what you do is she gives you a little extra fabric and then you save it and you'll use it in other months blocks. But here are, is block one or month one fabrics. And then month two came the other day and here is month two. And it came with this one. So I'm really curious to see how we're going to use this whole panel. It's like, isn't that pretty? It looks like a sampler. So I haven't even looked at the directions yet because I got to do month one first. Um, but they're all starched and ready to go. And it comes like this then in a bag with the fabrics and the directions just for those blocks. Um, it's only the first month you get like all the info. So yeah, so that I need to get to hopefully before I go back to school on Monday. I'm hoping this weekend I get at least block month one done. Um, but we'll see. So that's a plan. Oh, like I'm shaking. I'm so hungry. <laughs> okay. And then I've been wanting to have a cheddar and black quilt for a while. I've had these in my stash. Um, they're like kind of real vintage looking cheddar and black prints. So I've been looking around Pinterest and then books and trying to get an idea of what I want to do. And then I thought, um, I have these paper pads from Fat Quarter Shop, which I love stitching on these. They had a stitch along a year or two ago and I really enjoyed it. It's very precise, it's very easy. And they even tell you like in the front, like what sizes to cut your fabric so that you're ready to go. It's always gonna be a little bigger than you need. Like they're not exact cuts because you're sewing on paper. So basically you're sewing on the paper and then flipping it and then sewing the next piece and flipping it. And it's really easy. Um, and they come out very precise. So I thought, well, I'm going to use one of these for that. But what I can't decide is, okay, so I have Log Cabin, which I'm leaning towards the Log Cabin. I have the Economy Plus block, which I love, but I think I have a different idea what I want to do with this one. But maybe. I don't know. I just can't decide which would look better in basically a two-color quilt. The Pineapple one, which I remember this one was really fun to sew. And then Courthouse Steps, which this is not my favorite, so I think I've counted this one out. So it'll probably be one of the other three. But what I can't decide is if I should just stick with the black and cheddar or if I should try to incorporate in some cream. Like this cream has the black and cheddar in it. And I have a few different prints like that that have the black and cheddar in them. Um, so I don't know. I've looked up on Pinterest and I see a lot of black and cheddar quilts, but not much that has cream mixed in. But then I did see a log cabin block that was... Um, this was all black. One side was all black. Then the other side was the cheddar, the cream, the cheddar, the cream, or something like that. But I was thinking I could do that. So I don't know. Tell me what you think. So I just do. Oh, and then I thought, what if I did all black? Actually, I got this idea from my, um, primitive gatherings quilt pattern I have with the log cabin one. And she has it all red and dark, dark blue. And then she has, no, she has it all red and white. And then she has a dark, dark blue in the center. I think it's called our constitution quilt or something. Anyway, um, so I thought, what if I did all black and shatter with just the cream block in the middle? So should I do that or should I do the cheddar mixed with the cream for one side? Yeah, let's pull a few up here. Maybe kind of like that. For the log cabin. So if you have an opinion, leave it in the comments below. 
I can't decide, but I really like want to get it done for this year. I probably won't, but I would really love to. So that's another plan. Not really haul because I've had all this haul from a long time ago. Um, and then my last bit of haul, I just want to show you in case you've never seen these. Um, there's a blog called Woodbury Way. Um, did I write her name down? Let's see. Mm, I didn't write her name down. Allison? Allison Jensen, I think it is. At Woodbury Way. And she has this quilt pattern she came out with a long time ago called, hold on, oh, um, called Chamomile, the Chamomile quilt. So this is what it looks like. And you can get this on her site. And you'll see that it's all these low volume um, patchwork here, squares. And then the sashing is usually a light, a solid color, and then two whites on either side of it, and then another color for the cornerstones. Um, so she's been having, she find, okay, so back, rewind. She used to just post on Instagram and she would post, um, haul, or not haul, um, pools of fabric pools for the quilt she was making, but she didn't have a store or anything. She would just post those to show what she was doing and everybody loved the fabric she put together. She's just really got a gift for that. So eventually she started a store where she pools fabric and would sell like bundles. And then she started making patterns. I don't know if in that order, but um, so then she has the pattern and she has a lot of kits for this, for the different holidays, which I love. So the first one I had gotten last year, I think was the Christmas one. Oh, and I don't have all the, okay. So I have a whole bundle of low volume Christmassy prints and then you get, um, you can pick your sashing and border options. So uh, this, these three will be the sashing. These three solids, which I love that they're solids. I don't use solids a lot, but I think in this it's really cool. And then this is the um, binding, and then this is the backing. So, so pretty all together, aren't they? I love that. And then I have a whole pile of low volume, Christmassy um, fat quarters that I would use to make the patchwork blocks, which are all buried down in there. So I'm gonna pull them all out again, but I can show you for the other one. So then in the summer, she had a patriotic version. So here's the fat quarter bundle to make the Patrick blocks. You can see all pretty patriotic and just red, white, and blue prints. But I love how she combines them. And then this is for the sashing, and I'll put it with a white solid, which I must have had somewhere. I don't know what I did with it. And then she just recently came out with a Halloween one. So here is the fat quarter bundle for all the low volume Halloween prints. So cute. And then this is the combination. Now this is prints for the sashing. This is different. So you've got this purple, and then I think this will be the cornerstones, or maybe these are the cornerstones. This is less. Okay, so it's probably, this is the sashing. So this is a Lori Holt um, cross stitch print, and then the Riley Blake dot in light purple. And then these are probably the cornerstones because there's only a little bit of that. So there it is all together. So if you follow Woodbury Way on Instagram, she posts when she's going to be um, showing or when she's going to have kits available and they go pretty fast. So she'll tell you like what day, what time, and you just have to go try to order it. Like everything else, we have so many things like that where everybody wants them, so you just have to go order. So anyway, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so I thought those were really cool. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're getting a lot of quilting or stitching or whatever fun things you do done. Um, let me know down below if you're working on any quilts right now and what you're working on. Maybe it's something I haven't heard of. And let me know about my cheddar and black quilt. What do you think I should do? Should I keep it all cheddar and black or should I somehow mix in that cream? What do you think would be look the best? Um, so I will be back with a cross stitch update soon because I have a lot. I finished a lot here on my break. I've been trying to work on my Halloween whips and, and fall whips and get as many as I can done. Um, I have made a few starts because it is sampler September. So... I have made a few new starts, but I've been really trying. I just have one I'm just about to finish this morning also. So I've been trying to finish that. So that should be coming up soon. Um, so today is Thursday. You'll probably see this by Saturday. And then I would like to have an update video that I'll film on Sunday. And that will probably be uploaded for Monday. Um, but we'll see. So anyway, have a great day wherever you are in the world. And I will talk to you later. Bye.